motion that uh, Josh is placed on that committee. Motion. Second. A motion and second. All in favor? Uh, uh, discussion. Uh, discussion. Or is, is there is there a way to delay until the next meeting to vote on it, just so everybody has a chance to? Y'all don't know it. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I don't know. <coughs> Josh, you want to stand up? I just think that's got to be a way that we, I think that's more of a realistic way for us to do it though. To vote on the next meeting. We have to make sure we vote on the next meeting. I'm like, sorry, I've got nothing against that at all. I just think we need to get into that habit. We get to get out of habit. You guys can tell me that whatever, but it's my discussion here. It's a special session. So do you want to vote on the table? In light of this discussion, do you want to go to the next item? And here's some more information. Sure. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, the next item, none of us up here seem to know anything about it. The city has a number of ordinances uh, dealing with at least eight different boards and commissions that the mayor appoints the citizens to and the council approves. These boards and commissions are appointed at seven different times on the calendar year. I don't feel like this is efficient or a business-like manner to run the city government. Uh, I would like to propose uh, the following ordinances, and I will go through them again, and I'll list them in a minute. Uh, they all people be appointed on June 1st to fill any slots in these places. <coughs> I understand resignations or whatever that need, would need to be filled during the year, but, but the general appointment for the year. And that uh, the mayor, uh, whoever it is, would make these appointments before the last meeting in May. <coughs> to give the council a full council meeting to consider these in case there's any questions. But the slate would be presented for all uh, appointments for that year. Uh, the, the rotation, their term limits on the boards, and these rotate through. So uh, we're, not, we're not reappointing every board at this point in time, or it wouldn't be once, but that every committee and board would be appointed at one time. And then we, after those appointments were approved, we could actually have swearing in of the uh, board members and stuff like that at, the, at, the, at one of the meetings following that. Uh, these boards are the Board of Public Works, uh, and that's November 3rd. Park Board's June 1st. Industrial Development's August 1st. Planning uh, Commission is September 24th. Airport Board's November 3rd. Board of Adjustments, February 1st. Uh, ambulance district, which we don't have now, is December 16th. And we've got human rights and we've got housing. But they're all over the board. And I'm just trying to condense these into one time where the mayor would make a slate, present it before the last meeting in May. The council would have that council meeting to address that in case there was any questions. And then the appointments would be voted on on June 1st. In addition, I would like to refer these ordinances that I named off, uh, or the boards that I named off, I would like to refer those uh, ordinances to the Human Resource Committee to have several items cleaned up in them. Some of these ordinances, and there may be updates, I haven't worked with Brenda and Terry to try to find them. But some of these are from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And there are many things in here that are not applicable, shouldn't be in there, and so on and so forth. But instead of trying to draw each one of those ordinances out tonight, and which could be quite lengthy, I would like to refer these all to be go to the Human Resources Committee to be cleaned up and then can be presented. And we'll work with Terry on whether there might be uh, an ordinance somewhere along that cleaned up part of that, but uh, I think 
we just need to clean up some of this type of stuff and be a little bit more businesslike. Uh, just one thing, I think on housing authority, that's an appointment that's made by the mayor that's not put on by the council. Okay, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I just, I, I was going to get that to before. Yeah, well, I, I just understand that that's, okay. but I, you know, I don't think that needs to be Included. changed because that's, that's one that's made by the, appointment made by the mayor, but that's not voted on by the council. Do we need to do we need a motion? Make a motion on that, or yeah, well, it's I trying to find all those people at one point in time. You know, it's it's rough trying to find people now when it's spread out. Mm -hmm. My regulation is leaving as is uh, because it's you know trying to go out there and find somebody for you know three or four different boards. Uh, you, know, you may think it's pretty easy. Uh, but uh, no, no, no. it's it's uh, so uh, <coughs> you know it's because if you go and you look at the list right now, you know, yeah, they are old because there's been resignations, there's been sicknesses, and so it's you know this person starts at different times. So uh, um, uh, I would just say leave it as it is for right now. But if we go ahead and, and refer to the human yeah. resources that. I mean, yeah, yeah some of the ordinance there, yeah. but I mean, as far as yeah. the, the dates and everything else, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, clean the ordinances up. I, I would say leave the, the ordinances spread out that way. It's yeah, you know, it, it's sometimes it's pretty hard to you know, try and find somebody that's going to sit there and stick their neck out. Sure. I'm just waiting on <clears throat> your, your but, but yeah, but, but but cleaning them up and making them you know more uh, you know up to date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no problem. Something out of the, of the recent points, not the past points. Yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> include them up to, you know, that's like, just like we did with the fire irons, 1928 to, yeah. yeah, 2023. Okay. All right, um, uh, anything else? we got to finish the, uh, about, mm -hmm. um, what is, so, the, that was my, Okay. Point of the discussion. So, right. so it's up to the, the rest of you all. It's up to the rest of you to make a motion to appoint him now or wait two weeks or bring him up here for an interview. Well, I don't have to wait. I, I know the man and he, he's a fine guy, but if y'all, if you know his dad, he worked for City Light Gas and Water for, I don't know, how long did your dad work for City Light Gas? 35 years. 35? So, <coughs> so his you? dad was Floyd, or his grandpa was Floyd Cofer. Just passed away recently. I don't know if y'all knew him, but I don't know about him. He, he might not be worth living. But you know. <laughs> 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 you just approved the city ordinance to help him out. So. <laughs> I was only so need a motion one way or the other. Well, we don't have anything personal against the gentleman, but Understand we need we need to make it a habit yeah. not to appoint and vote at the same time. Yeah. That's, that's my opinion. Um, for, for any appointment. Nothing, nothing against the gentleman who was last appointed, but there's a councilman sitting here that didn't even know the name. We know his name now. I'm, I'm not talking about Mr. Coker, I'm talking about the last appointment. There's a council person here that had not heard the name before. Would you mind showing up at the next meeting? Yes, sir, I'll be here. All right. Okay. In favor of that. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So, motion been made, second to push the voting off to the next one. All right. All right. Uh, Mayor's report. One of the things that you guys are going to come up over the next few months is the uh, capital improvement sales tax. This is a continuation of a tax that, due to a clerical error, it was not put on this uh, thing, but it's going to be uh, in the uh, uh, August. And it's uh, one tax that everyone's been paying for the last 19 and a half years. Um, but it is a 490000 Uh 419 yeah. I believe. So that number correct. But it's a huge percentage of the city's revenue. So it's going to be a continuation. $40,719.91 per month average for the last 12 months. Okay. So it's something that... Uh, and from the citizens, when you're sitting there looking at it, um, that that's one of the ways how uh, 
capital improvements are done, everything within there, if you were to take over $400,000 or $40,000 a month out of the city's budget. Um, so it's not going to be on this ballot, but it will be up, and so that has to be made and approved by May 23rd. <clears throat> so we're going to need a uh, ordinance and all to place that. We'll have an ordinance for about three months. Okay. And uh, so uh, <coughs> uh, that's going to be something that, uh, you know, that would be a huge effect on to the city and how to do all the uh, other taxes that are out there uh, and uh, keeping those up and going so that the city can stay good and, and help. Now, um, just to clarify, that is a continuation tax continuation. we've been paying already. It's not yeah. going to be any additional. Yeah, it's nothing it's additional. It's just that. a continuation. And, uh, <clears throat> but, you know, from the city standpoint, you know, we run $4.3 million. You take over four hundred thousand dollars out. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Yeah, just around. So five hundred thousand. You know. That is, that is also how we paid for Floyd Street. Yeah. Uh, Ten years ago when that collapsed, so it's uh, definitely needed. So just uh, stay up on the issues and all, because you know, two weeks from now, you're going to be voting on mm -hmm. new council, new mayor, and a lot of those acts aspects, you know, they're going to have to uh, work with what you did. And, uh, um, and from a lot of aspects, it's going to be a lot of hard because the finance committee sits there and meets and goes over the budgets with all the fire, with all the heads. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, whether you're uh, buying a dozen eggs three and a half years ago for 68 cents or you're buying them this week for $3.20, uh, you know, 4.3 don't go as far. And you've got a uh, uh, group of volunteers running a multi-million dollar co company up here. So uh, give them your support and give them your need. But come two weeks from today, please go out there and vote. And uh, uh, look and see what you've got and see what, who's out there and, uh, that, uh, and vote your conscience. So, all right. Uh, public comment. comment. Okay, well, go ahead and go first this time. Yeah. Right. How do we make sure that don't happen anymore? Um, I've asked Brenda to write up the policy and procedures because at some point in time, Brenda will retire. And, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? Really. Really. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, and so that way, there's a, there'll be a special step <laughs> aspect. So there's a, uh, tax ordinance comes up, um, you know, what's the next step, you know, we, Terry does this, Brenda does that, council does this, you know, um, and because uh, uh, one of the hardest parts on her job is there's not a ton of training for different issues, especially something like this that comes up once every few years. Well, I know everything else has been going on too, I know. Yeah. I didn't know where it all came from. Yeah, and, and so it's a. Uh, and I didn't mean to throw anybody under the bus. No, no, it's uh, it, it's just like like you know the department heads have been all over this past year have been working on inventories, you know, and just so because each one of our department heads, you know, someday they're going to retire, and that also helps them with their budget, uh, knowing what their inventory is, and you know what's the next process and what's the next step, and you know what is next in rotation to be you know aged out. Mm -hmm. Um, and things along those lines, and uh, so uh, yeah, there's lots of aspects that go along with it. All right, go. Good evening, everyone. Um, and good evening to everyone behind me. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm giving an update on our talking trash and this initiative. It's actually going pretty well in spite of the freezing weather. Um, we did <coughs> kick off this weekend on Saturday, the 18th. Uh, at 8 a.m. and just for everyone's awareness, we are always there from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or there's someone manning the phone so that you can call and drop off supplies and I'll go into that. But I just want to say that um, we picked up 22 bags of trash and that was only on a mile and a half of land. So we started on Vanderbinter from the North Bypass. We went up and made a uh, right on commercial down alongside the Emerson property, did both sides, and took it all the way out to where the bypass stops there. Then we did a quarter of a mile from the 
uh, city limit sign, the Sherlock Crow sign, uh, in, and uh, that actually went really well. Uh, Hoskins Trucking came out and was very appreciative. Different community uh, members have been very thankful and asking how they could help. <coughs> They've even come and donated some extra things. And the other section that we did, just to kind of gauge, we had six um, volunteers, including um, my husband, Charles. Uh, we had six volunteers. It took us approximately, uh, I would say, eight and a half to 12 hours to do that amount of work against the wind and the cold temperature. So um, our ask, oh, I just want to say thank you because I always need to start with also being thankful. Um, Kiwanis uh, and Rotary Club both gave supplies. There were several residents of Kennet that brought us supplies like um, first aid kits and things like that. Our list um, of all the things on the list that we um, would still need would be gloves. We, we, would not, we wouldn't have enough gloves and trash bags. We have enough to get started, but to continue going at 22 bags of trash um, on a mile and a half, we're probably going to need just a few more bags and gloves. Um, I told, I told not gloves. <laughs> not, we don't need any more gloves. Oh, we do. Oh, we're going to need some. I need yeah. the bags. <laughs> and the trash bags. The and those are commercial trash bags. contractor bags. trash bags. Contractor. Um, <laughs> I also want to say that Sharps and uh, Republic both um, gave us a 30-yard dumpster, and so that is, it has been placed at the Emerson property. So Jordan Walker, who's been renting the Emerson property to do the um, scrap of uh, that property, allowed us access to the commercial side of that property. So our dumpsters are in there in a secured area, and we've really been working to man that when that gate is open so that nobody's just throwing random trash and creating the problem that we're trying to um, help clean up. Um, and that's, we're very um, gracious to Sharps and Republic, and they are going to dump that as needed. Um, and then so far we've had, like I said, 22 bags of trash, plus some other types of debris, like um, just a few limbs and stuff like that. But we don't really have enough to go to the, to have a compost pickup yet. Um, my ask is that this week, we would really need some more of the community service workers, so I'm going to make rounds again with uh, Gen Jennifer Montgomery and um, <coughs> also with Amber Heron, who has, uh, has taken on a new position here to get as many community service workers as we can to do those the city limit signs in, I think. And then as far as the help <coughs> that we need, we will take as many volunteers as we can possibly have this Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We'll take any increment of time that um, anyone is willing to give. We would need um, volunteers that would focus on Ward 1. And, and if there's high school students like um, Girl Scouts, Kiwana, Kiwanis Club members, um, Boy Scouts, 4-H, we would have them just in the community area, but we would leverage our adult volunteers to help us with the roadways into the city. Um, does anyone have any questions? The main location is at 1116 North Vandeventer. It's a big green building with the copper top. You can't miss it. And we will have someone there to give you the supplies that you need. And we <coughs> recommend that you wear long sleeve shirts. Talking trash is hard work. <laughs> I know. That my husband kept saying, oh, I'm not going to talk any more trash. I'm done talking trash. It's hard work. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for me? The, our website, we, we finished it earlier today. It will go live at midnight tonight, and there will be a form on there for volunteers to um, submit the times that they want to come. But you by no means have to sign up online in order to come. You show up, we will orient you with the information, and then we'll give you the supplies that you need, and you can start talking trash. Does anyone have any questions? Um, it's www.tabernacles, and I'm going to spell it T-A-B-E-R-N-A-C-L-E-S.com. And the menu item is Talk and Trash, www.tabernacles.com. And the menu item is Talk and Trash. Do you have a Facebook page as well? Um, the Facebook page will be um, launched tonight also. How many people helped you? 
Um, we had a total of, of six people on Saturday, which which we wanted to start slow, and we wanted to have the community <coughs> service workers come first. And so we had one, and he did an excellent job. But we definitely would, would love to have more people that need to do. I mean, he was so excited. He said he needed to do 100 hours of community <laughs> service. He was like, if I help you over the next few weeks, I'll satisfy he that. Six and, and, didn't come back. and he was very. Huh? Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. no. He, he, he actually texted us and said that he would be back. I said he did six and didn't come back. <laughs> he did six hours for this. Um, let me see here. Th those are the main things that I wanted to say. Like I said, we're going to continue in Ward 1 um, in the upcoming week. I plan to spend Wednesday and Thursday this week because the weather's going to break a little bit for us, talking to some of the residents and getting you know some of the residents to um, commit some time to volunteer. But that's, that's our plans for this week. Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., we will take any increment of volunteer time to help us pick up the trash. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, since the passage of the new uh, uh, building codes uh, tonight, uh, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of discussion uh, about trash and grass violations and whether the owner of the properties are responsible for maintaining them when the tenant is living there. After passing these, uh, the property maintenance code, uh, it's more this one more clearly defines whose responsibility it is. So, and I'm just going to. Can you read it? Is? Well, I'm going to highlight it. Uh, but I do have copies for anybody that would like to have it. Under sanitation, it says the exterior property and premises shall be maintained in a clean, safe, and sanitary condition. The occupant shall keep the part of the exterior property that such occupant of occupies or controls in a clean and sanitary condition. So the trash in the yard is the occupants. Okay. It also says the disposal of the rubbish. Every occupant of the structure shall dispose of all rubbish in a clean and sanitary manner by placing such rubbish in an approved container. Rubbish facilities. The owner of every occupied premise shall be shall supply an approved covered container for rubbish and the owner of the premises shall be responsible for the removal. So the owner is responsible for the container and the service to have it removed. So if there's any questions about from a landlord that says the trash in their yard, if they're not supplying a container, it's their trash. So that's what we will be writing citations. Can you read the first part of that over again, the word the occupant is responsible for the trash? The exterior property and premises shall be maintained in a clean, safe, and sanitary condition. The occupant shall keep that part of the exterior property that, the, that such occupant occupies or controls in a clean and sanitary condition. Where are they going to put their trash? In a container that's provided, so by, the the that's provided by the owner. Wow. <laughs> so then all your rental properties, the owners are going to do these <coughs> contract with mm -hmm. the trash service. Between them and their yeah. Okay. Yes. And then, so as long as they do that, then everything goes towards the yeah. occupant. The occupant, yes. <coughs> Could I ask a question? Yes. And I'm going to show you so you can see. This is what happened. And for, so everybody can see, this is a rental property that when they left, the, the owner of the property asked to hire somebody, pay them $50, go dump it at the dump, and it ends up on a, a land. It's one of our 
citizens' properties. Mm -hmm. Is there somewhere in there that you could say, hey guys, let's uh, you've got to do this right. contract this with a provider that has a license to carry trash in Kennett instead of just some Joe Blow doing it. And has a place to uh, That's the responsibility too. of ever who hired them to do that. Yeah, well, what, yeah. what the person saying, when they went through this trash and went back to the property owner, they said, well, I hired so-and-so, and he could put it on his train, he was going to take the dump. I don't know where he's taking it. That's where it ends up. And this keeps happening with farmers. Yeah. They're dumping it on their properties. And what I'm asking is, can we mm -hmm. somehow make the property owner, when they have to dispose of this, I mean, it's just, I don't know what that needs to be disposed correctly. With, mm -hmm. with Sharp or Republic or, or Yeah, and it, or should, it should be on the owner to hire a record. But, and that's what I'm saying. Did. If we've got licenses for these trash carriers, that's who they should have to deal with to move that off of their property. And not individuals. And not, not at some individual, just, I don't want to stop the individuals for, for making money, but we do want to stop them from doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> well, put the liability on the owner if it's not disposed of properly. Well, it's real simple. This this particular person <coughs> said I just left this on the trash and found a bill and that they were exactly where it came from. Yeah. So when I go when I went to the property owner, the rent, rental property owner, he just said, Well, I paid so and so to take it to the dump. It's not my fault they didn't take it there. So that's yeah. that's what you're running into. Yeah. But it's the responsibility of the property owner to make to see that it is properly disposed of. Exactly. Well, that's, I mean, I just, I, this is stuff that I've been working on. I was going to bring up later, but since you were here, and, and that all makes sense. Yeah. This, this, how can we help? Uh, there's one other thing in this. Uh, that's away from the trash part. Which, if anybody's got any questions, they can come to my office, call, talk to me or Brian Hufford. Uh, he's the new property maintenance officer. All, any of us would be glad to help any way we can. Uh, the only other one in which we're fixing to get into is weeds and grass. And the new code says, upon failure of the owner or agent having charge of the property to cut and destroy weeds after service of a notice of violation, they shall be subject to prosecution. So by the new code, the owner is responsible for cutting of the grass and weeds and not the tenant not the tenant unless they make and arrangements with the tenant but it's still on them so i'm sure that y'all have got questions in the past and probably going to get a lot more but just reference them to me i guess
proper maintenance code for the uh, uniform code, and that will do so by the way. 